Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Mark Parham podcast. I'm Mark Parham, and you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Mark Parham underscore. Again, uh, you would spell that M-A-R-K-P-A-R-H-A-M is in Mary underscore. Um, for this podcast, I wanted to talk about two people. Uh, the first one is uh, Fiona Apple, and the second one is... Uh, somebody, I think she's a Korean singer songwriter named uh, Che Young. And, uh, you know, let me just uh, start from the first person I want to talk about. So, with uh, Fiona Apple, uh, she's one of my favorite singers, and I think she's very um, underrated, in my opinion. Uh, I remember her, uh, well, let me just give you some background on Fiona Apple. She's an American singer songwriter. She's uh, won three Grammy Awards, two MTV Awards, uh, Billboard Music Award. She was born in New York City. Uh, her most popular song that I know about uh, right now is, uh, well, the most popular song that you would know about, I would say, is uh, Criminal. And it was released in the 90s. And uh, she released an album. One of my favorite albums was called uh, Title. It was released July 23rd, 1996. And uh the album is actually considered one of the greatest albums of all time. Um, it went, I think right now it's at, uh, it's gone double platinum right now. I think so far it's might've sold more, uh, more copies. I don't know, but right now it's double platinum. And I remember, you know, when that album released, it was all over the place. It was her debut album. The videos were all over MTV. Um, it was, you know, blowing up at the time. And, I remember hearing songs like Shadow Boxer, Sleep to Dream, uh, Criminal. And some of those songs were, you know, so popular in the 90s that I remember watching, I think it was MTV Real World. And uh, yeah, I think it was MTV Real World. And they used to play some of those songs like in the background when they had certain scenes and stuff. At least I remember that. But again, that was at a time where MTV would have... Uh, I think that uh, shows like, uh, what was it, MTV House of Style, I think was at the time, and uh, Road Rules. That was another show that was on MTV. It was it was a great time for MTV. They used to have Yo! MTV raps and just different music programs that actually played real music. So to me, it was MTV's golden era. And uh, again, you know, as somebody with a, a huge uh, music collection, my mom used to take me to the music store, I would say, almost every Saturday, like my, my, my dad would give me allowance. My mom would take me to like uh, Sam Goody and different music stores. And I would always pass this album, her first album title. I would always pass it. It had a very distinct cover. It was like a, co a cover where all you would see is her eyes and it was like pale skin, but it was almost like the cover was looking at you. And I don't know who's, you know, taking the photo for that cover, but it's uh very striking. It's very simple and it's very striking, but I would pass it all the time in the, in the music store. And the, the crazy thing is I never picked it up. I mean, even though, you know, I've seen the album, I think my sister had the album, but it was something that I never really thought to listen to or it's I never picked it up. And I'm a person where I have hundreds of CDs, you know, Prince, Michael Jackson. I listen to a lot of music. I bought a lot of music, but it's an album I never picked up, even though the cover just stuck in my head. But um. Again, it's, uh, you know, for such a simple cover, it, it'll catch your eye. That's all I got to have to say about the cover. But I remember the album being around 51 minutes with uh, 10 tracks. And track number one was Sleep to Dream. That was a hit song. You had Sullen Girl, Shadow Boxer. Uh, that was another hit song. Criminal was a hit song. Uh, Slow Like Honey, The First Taste. Never is a Promise, The Child is Gone, Pale September, and uh, Carry On. So it was 10 tracks around, the album was around 51 minutes, uh, give or take. And uh, if you listen to uh, the music, uh, the music, in my opinion, stood the test of time. I mean, all the tracks on that album are amazing. I think even though there's like three hit singles on the album, from top to bottom, I mean, you can tell that she poured her heart and soul on, into that album. That album, I mean, it has no flaws, in my opinion. 
And uh, I forget how old she was, but I don't think she was all that old when she created those songs. To me, it's amazing. And even to this day, you don't find albums where top to bottom, there, every song is as good as the next song. But that was an album where, you know, it was perfection. And, and those songs weren't necessarily, I don't think they were even, you know, written, they weren't written by anybody else that I know of. I mean, you know, she's a very good singer songwriter. So again, classic songs from top to bottom. And, you know, that was, that was the nineties. One thing I'll say about the 1990s, in my opinion, it was one of the uh, best decades for music because you just had so many good classic albums come out. So many people that were trying to get into the music business that are, you know, stars and legends today. And, uh, you know, for 10 tracks, that album, even when I listen to it right now, I put it on repeat. Like I'm, if I'm on Spotify and, you know, the album is finished, I put it on repeat and I can listen to it over and over again. And you just again, it's just amazing. I don't know how to describe it. But uh, she went on to create five albums so far. Title was released in 1996. That was the album that I was just talking about. When the Pawn was 1999. Extraordinary Machine was 2005. The Idler Wheel was 2012. And Fetch the Bolt Cutters was released in 2020. I think that's her latest album. Again, all of those albums are classics, in my opinion. I mean, from top to bottom, each song is just amazing. So you can just listen to album from track one to track whatever a lot of albums you have to skip around or you just want to listen to the single those are all out al those are albums where you can listen to everything and just they're just amazing um again i consider her a legend even though she doesn't release music all the time but she goes for i would say quantity over i mean quality over quantity like a lot of artists now just release a lot of stuff like drake People say, oh, Drake is such a huge artist, and he is, but he just releases just random stuff. You know, Fiona Apple takes her time, and a lot of artists in the 90s took their time. Like, you maybe you'll have maybe an album every year. And uh, she doesn't necessarily do an album every year. She'll, you know, wait maybe the next five years or however long she makes music, but when she comes out with something, it's classic. And uh, all those albums that I just mentioned, Title, Win the Pawn, Extraordinary Machine, The Idler Wheel, Fetch the Bolt Cutters, all of those albums are amazing. I would tell anybody to go on Spotify, listen to those albums, and maybe pick them up. Or they, uh, top to bottom, just great music. Uh, again, Title is her, her debut album, and uh, I, I hope she creates, keeps creating music. You know, even though she's only released, I think, five so far and she's, you know, working on other stuff and, you know, little side projects and stuff. But I hope she creates uh, keeps on creating music and keeps on taking her time and putting out quality stuff. And, uh, you know, I would tell anybody if you don't know about Fiona Apple, just Google her, go on Spotify, go on YouTube and just listen to her stuff. It's, it's amazing. I mean, she has a lot of uh, great work I and mean, she's not an artist that's just going to release this random music. Uh, and so far, I mean, if you look at her, what discography, as they call it, it's, you know, head, head and shoulders above a lot of folks. I mean, a lot of people might have 12 albums, 10 albums, but the albums she released are all this great music to listen to. You can listen to every song, track one to track whatever, and you don't get tired of putting them, putting each song on repeat, at least in my opinion. So, and I hope she cre keeps on creating music. I think she's one of the best singer-songwriters uh, of all time, one of them. And she doesn't get a lot of credit for that, but proof is in the pudding. I mean, a lot of these artists now create songs that, you know, they get lyrics from somebody else, and it's their hit song and all this other stuff. They've got 10 writers and 50 producers and all this stuff. She just, you know, can come up with stuff out of her own head. So I like that. So... Again, you know, check out some of the music, go on YouTube, go on Spotify and, and listen to it. And uh, the second person I want to talk about was uh, there's somebody named Che Young. She's a Korean uh, hip hop slash singer. She's a K-pop star. I think she's 23 year old female from uh, South Korea. And uh, she's from the uh, group called Twice, if I'm not mistaken. And I, I ran across the situation when I was on Twitter so I went to Twitter.com, and you know how you see everything that's trending. And I ran across uh, 
you know, this incident because I think it was trending like number one or number four. And I just had to click on it to see, you know, what's going on? Like, who's this person that everybody keeps on talking about? And she wore a shirt with uh, on March 18th, I think, or yeah, March of this year. She uh, wore a QAnon shirt. I mean, that became a controversy. That was the first thing she controversy, you know, as far as the T-shirts. And the second T-shirt was a shirt on, I think, March 21st, 2023, where she wore a shirt with Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols, and he was wearing a swastika on his shirt. And, uh, you know, she issued an apology and took responsibility for the incident. And I don't condone any of the, you know, I don't condone, you know, wearing that type of stuff because, you know, it causes hurt to some people. There's a, you know, history to that. But uh, I would say that it's amazing the same people that want to cancel her because you go on Twitter and all these people, oh, well, they should, you know, cancel her and people shouldn't listen to her music. But we should all look in the mirror. We're all uh, flawed human beings. We're not perfect. And behind closed doors, we've all said some things that are racist or hurtful in nature. I mean, that's just human being. That's human nature, even though people don't like to admit it. But it is what it is. Uh, I like that she took responsibility for a mistake instead of blaming you know poor judgment you know you know the poor judgment well let me back up i'm glad she took responsibility for her actions because a lot of stars you know blame oh well i'm young i didn't know she took responsibility and i i commend her for doing that i hope she learns from the t-shirt controversy and she moves forward and uh again this whole thing of cancel culture and someone does one thing wrong and we want to cancel them. I mean, if that's the case, we'd have to cancel all of these stars. I mean, no one's perfect. And if you look in the background of all these people, famous people, stars, normal people, we've all done stuff that we don't, you know, we look back on and we say, well, man, I was stupid for doing that. So I hope she learns from the incident. I hope she moves forward with her career. Uh, on Twitter, it was a huge blow up in reaction. I think she has a lot of fans from, you know, seeing the, the, the trending, uh, when I was clicking on the trending page on Twitter, you know, just seeing all the reactions. I think she has a lot of fans and, you know, she's very young and has a huge career ahead of her. So, again, I just would say, you know, I hope she learns from the mistake and we shouldn't go around just canceling everybody that's made a mistake. That was a mistake. I don't agree with it, but the folks who want to cancel her should look also look into the mirror. Uh, and I'm glad she took responsibility for it because, you know, most stars nowadays would say, oh, well, I didn't know because I'm a young person and all this other stuff. No, she said, you know, I, I recognize that I made a mistake. So I think people should move on, move forward, still listen to her music. And uh, it's a growing, uh, it's, it's an experience you'll grow from. So that's just my uh, my take. Again, please uh, check out my podcast on Spotify. Follow me on Spotify and then also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, you can follow me on uh you can listen to my podcast, I mean, on all of the uh, podcast platforms. I'm pretty much on all of them. But again, I'm going to be making podcasts on art, architecture, sports, music, politics. So, again, check me out. I'll say it again. Follow me on Spotify and then also uh, subscribe to me on YouTube. Thank you.